Over the years, I've been sent many wireless thermometers by the most popular manufacturers, but I've always went back to my meter probes. Today, I'm testing out the best and the newest thermometers and putting them head to head against each other. Taking a look at things like features, value, the app, range, reliability, and I'll be personally ranking each thermometer and giving you my recommendation on which one to buy. Has my meter been dethroned? Let's dive in. The format of this video will go over certain categories and I'll claim a winner for each category. Just in case there's something specific that means more to you than let's say another feature. For example, some of you may find the range to be the most important thing. Others, it may be the reliability or the app. At the end of the video, I'll summarize my thoughts and give you my personal choice and why, but it's not gonna be a point system. I'm not tallying up the points here, but you're welcome to do so at home and pick your favorite winner. I'll be looking at the total value and the pros and cons of each and give you what I feel is the best probe today. If you find my extremely scientific experiment, and by the way, I'm just kidding, but if you find it too boring, as a reminder, I have included chapters so you can skip around the video to your favorite part. This video is gonna get lengthy and I'll try my best to cut it as efficiently as I possibly can, but there's a lot of good detail. Let's introduce each thermometer. First, we have the meter. This is arguably the first real wireless thermometer and the one to successfully do it well. It's also the oldest, first released around 2016. The price ranges from as low as $70 all the way up to $300. We will be using the most popular model, which is the Plus. For our test, as it's most comparable to the other contenders, the meter block is sort of like their highest level of thermometer, and it's great and all, but it's not apples to apples. And the lowest model is just so outdated, so the plus is gonna be perfect. Next, we have the meat stick, which was first released around 2019. However, we're gonna be testing out the 4X model, which is the latest and greatest from the meat stick. It's kind of their flagship, and it was released early this year, I believe around February 1st, 2023, at least that's when I released my video. The prices range anywhere from $70 to $200, but the Meat Stick 4X comes in at $125. The next two are very new to the market, and both were introduced in 2022. The Temp Spike and Combustion Inks Predictive are the only models that feature internal rechargeable batteries. The Twin Temp Spike launched really, really recently, like last month, 2023 recently, and prices range for the Thermal Pro Twin Temp Spike. It's anywhere from $100 to $130. Oftentimes you do find it with a coupon at $99. And lastly, Predictive, depending on the package, comes in at $150 all the way up to $350. I have the extended range package with the booster and the additional screen. But for the range test, we're not gonna be using the screen because it does add a little bit more range. And I wanna make sure we are comparing apples to apples. Otherwise, the meter blocks, you know, fair game. So we're gonna be sticking to what you see here, which is the booster. Let's talk about features, aesthetics, and total value. Meter has two sensors, the internal reading and the ambient reading. The advertised range is 165 feet with a battery life of 24 hours before you need to charge it. I've went as much as 18 to 20 hours, no problems. Actually, for all the probes, the battery life is not a concern. The accuracy on meter is rated at plus or minus 0.7 Fahrenheit with a temperature range of 212 to 527 degrees Fahrenheit. It does come with a one to two year warranty. If you extend the warranty out, Highly recommend you do that, it's very easy to do. And it's also dishwasher safe. Actually, all the probes today will be dishwasher safe, so we can just check that off for all of them. However, the Meter Plus can be tethered to Wi-Fi for virtually unlimited range. The only other probe that can do that on this list is the Meat Stick. The Meat Stick 4X has four sensors, an advertised range of 650 feet, a battery life of 25 hours before it needs to be charged, 
I have no idea what the actual tolerance on the accuracy is because I couldn't find it anywhere. But the temperature range is 212 to 572 degrees Fahrenheit, and it comes with a one year warranty. The twin temp spike has two sensors, an advertised range of 500 feet, a battery life of 36 hours, an accuracy of plus or minus 1.8 Fahrenheit with a temperature range of 212 to 572 degrees Fahrenheit. And it also comes with a one year warranty. Lastly, the Predictive Monitor by Combustion Inc. has eight sensors and an advertised range of a thousand feet. And this is kind of going back to what I briefly mentioned earlier, but basically using a network of nodes, which they call the meat network, each node actually increases the range by 330 feet to give you an advertised total range of a thousand feet with the booster and a display if you strategically spread them out. So that's why I'm not gonna use the display, even though I don't think it's gonna get anywhere near a thousand feet because that's lab conditions, but let's keep things fair. Otherwise, we can also use the meter block or Wi-Fi. Combustion Inc. does not currently have Wi-Fi tethering, but the company has already publicly confirmed that a firmware release is coming out soon, which is fantastic. Now, aesthetically, although subjective, I was in a bit of a pickle and my engineering mind gravitated towards combustion ink. It just looked like a probe that I've used countless times in my profession and the pin like clip and the size made me all warm and fuzzy. But I asked a group of friends and family to rate them in order from best to worst and the final results were meter was first place, hands down. And a lot of people thought that the wood and the overall design gave it a very elegant look. And most of them said they would proudly display it on their countertops. The meat stick was second place, and some liked that futuristic look over the meter. Everybody, however, was impressed and agreed that combustion ink was very tiny and unique. Also, most placed the twin temp spike as last place and commented that it reminded them of a TI calculator, which is the same thing that I said in my individual video review. One thing that everybody agreed on though, however, hands down was they loved the display feature on the twin temp spike and combustion ink if you buy the extra package. That was a huge win. And a mother actually pointed out, which was very relevant, makes a lot of sense, that everything today is app only based and needing to switch between, let's say, a baby monitor and then monitoring your food or your temperatures just sucks. So having a display to quickly get the readings was awesome. Now features and value was a hard one. The twin temp spike only had two sensors, but it had a display and a rechargeable battery with good range. And you can often find it on sale for hundred bucks and you're getting two probes. On the other hand, combustion ink threw everything but the kitchen sink into theirs, but the price reflects that. Meters still pack the big punch, but the hardware is outdated. So for value, I had to give it to the twin temp spike. If you're on a budget, you can't beat it. You get two probes. There is a caveat though. Combustion Inc. is hands down leaps ahead of the competition in terms of hardware. Now without getting into it and without putting the company on the spot, and that's not my intention, so please don't take it that way. Let's just say I put my engineering hat on and took a closer look at Combustion Inc. What's going on internally is very well organized and very impressive. The unit has hardware to support major changes with future firmware updates that other brands simply cannot do. All right, let's talk about apps. This was wild, it was all over the place. Meter is the benchmark that all other companies measure themselves to. They have invested so much resources into their app, it's eye appealing, detailed, easy to navigate, and simple to use and understand. It's constantly being improved, upgraded, and integrated into other devices like Apple Watches, iPads. Hands down, this category goes to Meter. It's still leaps and bounds ahead of everyone else, and the main reason why I find it so hard to switch. I've always found the meat stick to be dark, messy, and a bit confusing and laggy. I do wanna say though, their GUI displaying their four sensor design is very well done and hats off to you, the meat stick. 
When I first reviewed the meat stick, it was a feature they had removed, and I was totally disappointed to see that, but I'm glad to see that they put it back in. Combustion ink, on the other hand, again, from an engineer's mind and perspective, I love the app. It was so nerdy and data focused. The eight sensors are being displayed as a readout, but I wish they took a page out of the meat sticks book and found ways to visualize things. My wife had to remind me that not everybody has a nerdy mind and it's a little too data driven for the average person. I don't wanna see that stuff go away though. I love that it has raw data to play with and the graphics to quickly and clearly see what is being predicted and interpolated. The company has confirmed a major update to the app coming very soon, but today it is what it is. The twin temp spike was very basic, but simple to read. It still has a very long way to go. I think people will appreciate the no fuss approach. Anytime I switched over to meter with any of these products, it just ran circles around the other guys. And in terms of the app, it clearly pointed out their shortcomings. So meter hands down still wins the app game. Now, when it comes to accuracy, here's the punchline. They're all within a degree or two of each other, but some of them will get you there a little slower and a little bit more chaotic than the others. I did a test using my sous vide. I placed each thermometer in the water up to the recommended minimum depth, a little bit past the minimum depth, which we'll talk about in a second. And I measured them against the sous vide reading and a control instant thermometer along the way to the desired temperature and at the desired temperature to see how each thermometer behaved and got to the final reading. When compared to the sous vide target temperature of 130 degrees Fahrenheit, meter was very consistent, at least in its behavior, and lagged behind the sous vide within three degrees or so until the last 10 degrees. And that's where it really narrowed the gap. Combustion ink was the most high tech and always stayed within the sous vide temperature within one and a half degrees. The twin temp spike was surprising and I can't quite explain it, but it started off acting like the meter and it was around three degrees or so within the sous vide. But when we crossed about 105 degrees Fahrenheit, the temp spike was like a degree or less behind the sous vide. Every time the sous vide hit a new value, sure enough, the temp spike would change over to that temp. The meat stick was wild and all over the place. At first, I placed it in the water at the minimum depth, right above the indicator. It started off eight to 10 degrees lower than everybody else, and then caught up and overshot by like two degrees. And then as we got closer to 130 degrees Fahrenheit, it slowed down and became much more precise. It ended up being just like the other two, the meter and combustion ink, ending within about a degree and a half of the CV. I repeated the test later that night, but I submerged it deeper up to the base or the ambient sensor base. And again, it was wild, but less so and a bit tighter. It also settled in and became more accurate sooner. So I think the meat stick is using all three of the four sensors to do some sort of interpolation, but not as well as combustion ink. I suspect maybe combustion ink is interpolating to a second degree polynomial or something along those lines and the meat sticks doing maybe a spline or something a little bit less accurate when compared to my control the instant thermometer which i would take several readings along the water tank meter and combustion ink were almost always exactly the same value as the instant thermometer and if i averaged out everything from the instant thermometer it was like within half a degree the temp spike was in favor of the sous vide and followed it very closely, and I don't know why, but I suspect because sous vide was measuring the water at its base as it's being heated, because its readings were always higher than the rest of the thermometers, and maybe the temp spike was just simply less accurate because it was nowhere near the base of the sous vide, nor was it closest to the sous vide. They were all lined up you know, within each other, so the temp spike was nowhere near the circulator. I think this makes sense though, because on paper, the temp spike is rated as being less accurate than meter and combustion ink. 
The meat stick again was all over the place compared to the instant read thermometer, but it did calm down after some time and it did close the gap. Combustion ink on the other hand is doing it right and was by far the most accurate and consistent of all the thermometers. And it also had an impressive minimum required depth, insertion depth. Let's talk about that real quick. As I mentioned earlier, not all thermometers are made the same. Now the largest diameter thermometer is a temp spike. The second being the meat stick, the third, the meter, and the smallest diameter by far is combustion ink. So the minimum depth that you have to insert your thermometer in, the line indicated on the probes is very, very important. If the probe's too big and the minimum depth is too long, the probe is basically useless when you're cooking things like filet mignon, which you don't have a lot of depth to play with, or delicate things like salmon because of the large diameter. So I summarized the minimum depth compared to the total length for each probe. Let's start off with the meter, which had a total length of roughly five inches and a minimum depth of roughly two and a half inches, which is half of the total length or a 50% ratio. The meat stick had a total length of just under five and a half inches and a minimum depth of roughly two inches, which gave you about a ratio of 36%. And likewise, the twin temp spike had a total length of five inches and a quarter and a minimum distance of about two inches and three quarters for a ratio of 53%. Combustion ink had a total length of just over five inches and a minimum distance of just over two inches for a ratio of 41%. So as you can see, the meat stick and combustion ink only required two inches of minimum depth, but the meat stick had the best depth to length ratio of only 36%. However, in our testing, it seemed to have favored being pushed in all the way as far as possible to the base or the ambient sensor to give a less chaotic reading and having a much more larger diameter, it's not gonna handle delicate food as well. And for that reason, I have to give this round for both accuracy and minimum depth to combustion ink. Now let's talk about range and reliability. This is probably gonna be the most interesting segment, at least it is to me. This was strictly Bluetooth testing. I did a total of three tests using my Monument Grill six burner gas grill, which is notorious for being a range killer. Each thermometer was inserted past its minimum indicated length at the most ideal room for range. For example, meter states not to insert their thermometer all the way for the best results. Temp spike doesn't seem to really care. The first test was using a potato with no heat and a cold grill with the lid down, obviously. The second test was the same thing, but now we were baking the potatoes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And the last test was cooking a rotisserie chicken at 375 degrees Fahrenheit and finishing it off at the end at 425 degrees Fahrenheit to crisp up the skin. So I feel kind of bad for this chicken because it looks like it's in a 300 movie and King Leonidas and his buddies hogtied it and speared the heck out of it. I wanted to test out a real cooking scenario for range, reliability, and also temperature accuracy and how well the chicken came out after all the heartache. But I also wanted to see if temperature affected range in any way, which it did but not by much, about two to three feet if any. But I'll talk about that more during the reliability test. We did two range scenarios, one that was line of sight and one that was out of sight. Line of sight was a linear distance from the grill to the area in my yard that I use a lot to play with my daughter with no major reasonable obstructions like buildings. Out of sight was off to the corner, close to the street, with my house, several trees, with buildings in the way, and major obstructions. To measure the distance, I used three things. An Apple AirTag, my drone and remote control, which by the way was crazy accurate, an old-fashioned digital distance measuring wheel. For the line of sight test, meter claims 165 feet. I got 75 feet, and it reconnected at 18 feet to the base, so you had to get really close to the grill for it to reconnect. The meat stick claims 650 feet, I got 79 feet, and it reconnected around 35 feet. The temp spike claims 500 feet, I got 75 feet, and it reconnected at 42 feet. Combustion ink claims 1,000 feet, but I got 85 feet, and it reconnected at 40 feet. Now for the out of sight test, I got 64 feet with the meter, and it reconnected at 15 feet to the grill. The meat stick, I got 67 feet, reconnected at 22 feet. Temp spike, I got 65 feet, and it reconnected at 24 feet. Combustion ink, I got 71 feet, and it reconnected at 22 feet to the grill. 
Reconnection on attempts spike was impressive and fast. You got a notification quickly. As you moved forward, it was quick to reconnect. The out of sight numbers was worse for all of them, which is expected because stuff is in the way, but they all acted consistent, except for the meat stick. The meat stick did something really weird. If it lost connection, it didn't tell you for a while, like a really long time in some cases. In my first time doing all this with the potato test, it didn't show a disconnect, even when I walked down the street. So I got in my car and drove three blocks down and it finally alerted me of a disconnect. There's no way this thing has that kind of range on Bluetooth. I really thought I was on Wi-Fi or something, but I didn't tether to anything. When investigating further in the graph, it actually shows a lag or a dip where it clearly disconnected, but it doesn't alert you for whatever reason. I guess it tries to do something in the background to reconnect. So I reset the app and reconnected the probe to see if that helped, and it did. I didn't have to drive three blocks down for an alert, but it still did the same thing. The alert to notify you of an actual disconnection was somewhere around two to three minutes longer than the rest of the probes. It really leads you to believe that everything's fine and dandy until you glance at the data, mainly the graph, and then you realize it stopped collecting data and then boom, the alert comes later. That's just not cool. Now for reliability, this was just me sitting next to the grill for one hour each time. So it was three hours total measuring how many times the signal dropped or lost connection with the base unit and my phone being right next to the probes in the grill with no distance or range whatsoever. Cold temps with the potato meter dropped one time. The meat stick zero, temp spike zero, combustion ink zero. Now with the second test with some heat and baking the potato, meter dropped the signal twice. And one of those times I actually had to take the probe out, place it back into the base for it to reconnect. And then I was able to keep going. The meat stick dropped once, temp spike and combustion ink had zero disconnects. With the third test, the rotisserie chicken meter again dropped signal twice, the meat stick once, and combustion ink and temp spike zero drops. The meter was far less reliable than the other probes. The meat stick being second here, it's the most frustrating thing about the meter, and it's probably due to the outdated hardware. As far as range, combustion ink has the longest range, and the temp spike being the shortest range to reconnect. Both units had zero random disconnects though, and that's refreshing. I have to give this round to the temp spike because it reconnects quickly, it's reliable, and it has a decent Bluetooth range. Combustion ink was right there next to it, and if you're looking for total range and that's really important to you, then combustion ink wins. Okay, so how would I personally rate these wireless thermometers? First off, I would like to say that all of them do a great job and will get you to the desired temperature just in their own way with their own personalities. And in no way am I saying that if you already bought one of these, that you were wrong to do so or that you suck or they suck, nothing like that. You'll also notice that there's other probes that I left out of this test. I either don't know about them or I just don't think they're worth it and you should just skip them. If you own one of those probes, I'm sorry. With that being said, here's my ranking. In last place, I would have to say it's the meat stick. Although I love the four sensor GUI design, I find the app frustrating and laggy. Connecting the probe takes forever compared to the other probes, which is instant. The range is good, but the alert that you are out of range is delayed and dishonest. But don't get me wrong, I don't think it's intentional. The way it measures the temperature is also kind of strange with a wild start that eventually settles down. I don't think they're utilizing the four sensors and likewise, it seems to function best when it's inserted completely in. The probes are thicker. I mean, it's the second largest diameter, so it's not the best for delicate foods. Reliability also wasn't the greatest, but it was better than meter. Next in third place is the Thermal Pro Twin Temp Spike. It's a great value with two probes that just work. I love the built-in display, but there's a huge missed opportunity to include Wi-Fi in the base unit and give it the unlimited range. You already have a big base unit. Why not include Wi-Fi? This would have effectively made the twin temp spike on par with the meter block. The app is also very simple, but it's dated. Even though this is the latest and the newest probe out of the bunch, the app needs more work and it needs more polishing. 
the range is fine and reliable, and the twin temp spike system just simply works. So if you're looking for a no fuss Bluetooth only wireless system, the twin temp spike may be the best unit for you, but keep in mind, it's also the largest diameter, so delicate foods will be impacted. Okay, the next two was really hard for me to decide on. In a future update in Wi-Fi capabilities and app interface, may change my mind but second place has to go to combustion ink i love the hardware it's leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else they are actually utilizing the eight sensors with the best bluetooth range consistency accuracy and rock solid reliability if i could combine the hardware of combustion ink meters app and the gui from the meat stick displaying the four sensor design that'd be it it would be the perfect thermometer I also love the external display, but I wish they would have taken advantage of the real estate. It's a fairly large screen. I wish they would have displayed maybe like a sensor readout GUI or something like that. And I think more people would be willing to like, you know, put it out on their countertops and things like that. If you have an engineering mind like I do, you're going to nerd out on Combustion Inc. And I love the data driven reports and readouts. All of this tech and accuracy comes at a price though. And for some, it might be just out of reach. So in first place, it's still the meter. The most frustrating thing besides not being given a significant hardware update in years since its creation and inception is the constant disconnects and the wireless reliability. Most of the time it reconnects on its own after 20 to 30 seconds, but it's frustrating. The hardware is showing its age now that other brands are knocking on heaven's door. That being said, range is great. The app is fantastic. It's a good ratio of size, practicality and design aesthetics. It's still going to be the probe that I would most recommend to people. And the plus is just a fantastic value, but meter seriously, if you guys are listening, it's time for a hardware update. Give us a multiple sensor version with better reliability, better connection, but keep the Wi-Fi features. I guess from a company's perspective, why update the hardware if you're still number one and no one has knocked you off? Well, as we saw today, some companies are literally one or two updates away from taking the lead and one company is a firmware or a software update away from being crowned the new king. So what did you guys think? Which probe is your favorite? Did I get it right? Leave me a comment below with your favorite probe and why. And that's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative and I will catch you on the next one. Take care, everybody.